It's 6.42 a.m. on a dusky morning in the Amazon backwaters. In less than 36 hours, some of the inhabitants of this beautiful ecosystem will have landed on UK soil. As dawn breaks, a local team of fishermen prepare for the day. The day's mission, an intense exercise of precision, dedication and logistical finesse, transporting Paracaridon axorodi or cardinal tetras from the wild Amazon rivers to aquariums halfway around the world. Using carefully honed techniques passed down through generations, the fishermen ensure the cardinal tetras are caught without harm. It is a method that has gone largely unchanged since the 19th century and a beautiful sight to behold. The fish are corralled using fine mesh nets, taking care not to cause undue stress or injury. And it is a task which requires immense concentration, patience and experience. In the space of a few hours, thousands of cardinal tetras are collected. Each one is swiftly, yet carefully, placed into large water-filled containers on the boat. This is the first leg of their voyage, from the wild, untamed world of the Amazon to increasingly more and more controlled environments. Once a team reaches their base camp, the second stage of this meticulous journey begins. Each holding tank is monitored for temperature, pH levels and water quality. Ensuring these match the conditions of the Amazon as closely as possible is crucial. At the same time, an export manager reviews the paperwork required for the Tetra's journey. A logistical dance begins involving permits, taxes, freight costs and the weight of water, all calculated with the precision of a ballet performance. Every fish has its price. The humble Cardinal Tetra, while costing only a few pounds in the store, carries with it an invisible weight of legal and bureaucratic requirements, from health certifications to export declarations, the documentation needed to move these fish is a maze of complexity. Behind the scenes, a world of numbers and calculations spins into action. The fish density, the temperature fluctuations, the total dissolved gases and the antibiotic requirements. All these factors are carefully balanced to ensure the cardinal tetras can survive the long journey ahead. The packing room is a clinical environment, all sharp lights and clean surfaces. It's crucial to prevent the introduction of any potential contaminants that could jeopardize the fish's health in transit. The fish are then placed into clear plastic bags filled with water treated to mimic the exact conditions of the Amazon. But not too much water. Four-fifths of the bag is filled with pure oxygen. The reduced water and increased oxygen environment helps minimize waste production and keeps the tetras in good health throughout their journey. These bags are then sealed, each one becoming a mini life support system and placed into polystyrene boxes with heat packs. These insulated boxes and the exothermic reaction inside the heat pack help maintain a constant temperature inside, shielding the fish from the external fluctuations. Depending on the journey length, it may also be necessary to rebag and add more oxygen along the way. The pack tetras then begin the first leg of their journey, overland transit to Manaus International Airport. Bouncing along Amazonian roads, through towns and past endless greenery, they're heading towards the busy world of international freight. But even as they travel, a flurry of administrative work is happening behind the scenes. Health certifications, export declarations, airway bills, all being meticulously processed and prepared for the flight. Manaus, the capital of the Amazon state, hosts one of the busiest airports in the region, a vital hub for the transportation of all kinds of goods, including our small, bright passengers. As the Tetras arrive at the cargo area of the airport, their journey is only around one-tenth complete. The tightly packed polystyrene boxes are loaded onto the belly of their plane, their weight calculated to the gram to ensure no excess fuel is burned. An intense trip of over 5,400 miles is about to begin. Inside the darkened hold, the Tetras suspended in their minimal water and oxygen-filled bags have no awareness of the epic journey they're on. It's a silent, weightless voyage, insulated against the deafening roar of the jet engines just a few meters away. 
Simultaneously, back in the UK, the import manager is already waist deep in paperwork. An intricate dance of regulation and licensing is needed before the Tetris can even land. Documents for customs declaring the species, quantity and origin of a fish, veterinary health certificates and transport invoices. Every document must be in place, correctly filled out and approved. Back in the air, the Tetris Health is a race against the clock. Despite the carefully controlled conditions of their packaging, every hour in transit is stress they can ill afford. With a heavy FUD, the plane lands at London Heathrow. The belly of the plane opens, revealing row upon row of boxes. This cold, unfeeling cargo hold was the Cardinal Tetris home for the past hours. Swiftly but carefully, each box is unloaded and transported to Heathrow Animal Reception Center. It's here that one of the most crucial parts of the journey takes place, biosecurity checks. Each box is opened and the fish are inspected by experts to ensure they are in good health and pose no risk of transmitting disease. This process is not rushed. It's a painstaking and meticulous task where each fish's life hangs in the balance. Once the all clear is given, additional oxygen is added to the bags if needed and the boxes are sealed back up for the final leg of this initial journey, the trip to the importer's facility. Here another world awaits these tiny travellers, a place meticulously maintained to mimic the tropical Amazon and cause the least stress possible for these electric blue gems. This process isn't as simple as pouring the fish into the tanks, a sudden change in temperature could send the fish into shock. Equally, their temporary home inside the bag has been carefully prepared to avoid deadly ammonia spikes, and the gradual oxygen exchange will have built up CO2, which in turn will have lowered the pH. So the bags are floated in the tank, letting the water temperatures equalize. Then, depending on water parameters, an importer will either immediately net the tetras or gradually drip acclimate them. It's a precise science with lots of variability, but the goal is always to achieve the least stressful acclimation process, mitigating any sudden spikes in ammonia or pH. Once acclimated, they are released into the quarantine tanks and treated with a variety of medications to ensure they are completely free of parasites and infection. They are now in a controlled, carefully monitored environment, the first they've been in since leaving the Amazon. It's a far cry from the wide, flowing rivers they're used to, but nonetheless an important step in their long journey. As the day dawns the following week, the tranquility at the imported facility gives way to a beehive of activity. Distributors have arrived to transport these radiant fish to aquarium stores across the country. Upon arrival, each store manager is ready to receive these delicate creatures and another meticulous process begins. Like the importer's facility, each store follows its own acclimation process. The fish are added to the display tanks and marked as new arrivals that are not yet for sale. During this last quarantine, the tetras are observed for any signs of stress or disease. Once they are deemed healthy and properly acclimated to local water, they are ready for a prospective fish keeper to give them a new home. These efforts may seem extensive for fish that will be sold for just a pound or two, but for the store owners, the distributors, and everyone else in the chain, ensuring the health and safety of these small creatures is the heart of their business. And so, just a few short weeks after they left the Amazon, a new dawn breaks once again. The fish shop, filled with all sorts of aquatic wonders, is now bustling with activity. Among the various tanks, our cardinal tetras catch the eye of a fish enthusiast. Their vibrant colors, their lively group dynamic, the perfect addition to the home aquarium. And just like that, our tetras are bagged up one last time. They've been through this routine before, but this leg of the journey feels different. This time, they're headed for their final destination. Our Cardinal Tetras, now at home in a UK aquarium, have completed a journey that is not just a testament to human ingenuity, but also a reflection of a sprawling global trade that connects the wilds of the Amazon to living rooms halfway across the globe. What does this journey represent? Is it merely a testament to our fascination with life beneath the water, or is there something more profound at play? 
a wild creature captured, transported, and rehomed thousands of miles away from its natural habitat. It's a trade that has evolved over decades, even centuries, built on our curiosity, our fascination, our love for these aquatic gems. But as a tetras swim around their new home, it's worth considering the scale and impact of the global fish trade. Every year, billions of fish like these are moved around the world, each trade a small but essential gear in the larger machine of international commerce. With this comes responsibility. The logistics, the handling, the regulations, they're not just there to ensure the survival of these fish during their long journey, but also to protect our delicate ecosystems. Biosecurity is paramount. The spread of disease or invasive species, a significant concern. And then there's the environmental and ethical implications. What does the capturing of these wild creatures mean for the Amazon, for their native habitats? How do we strike a balance between our desires and the needs of nature? It's a complex web that we weave, one that goes beyond just delivering a vibrant fish into our home aquariums. And in the case of the Cardinal Tetra, fortunately there is legislation in place to limit the fishing seasons and protect wild breeding. This, however, is not the case for all wild-caught fish, and we must be mindful of this as we navigate our way across the aquarium trade. So, as our Cardinal Tetras swim about in their UK home, far away from the Amazon, they tell us not just a story of a remarkable journey, but they open up a conversation about us, our world and the intricate connections that bind us all.